Each year, the toy industry lights about $2.5 billion on fire. In this video, we're gonna talk about why that is and how 3D printing could actually help fix this huge economic and environmental problem. In 2021, the online toy industry made about $27 billion. If you turn that into fidget spinners, it'd be a fidget spinner for every other person on Earth. But there's a problem with this. Somewhere between 10 and 30 of every 100 toys goes unsold. It sits on the shelf, never gets picked up, and then it ends up getting recycled or thrown into a landfill. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna assume that it's 15% because we gotta hang our hat on some number. By the way, there's a spreadsheet down in the description for you to look at all of our numbers and please double check us. But if 15% of toys go unsold, that's $2.5 billion, billion with a B, that is just wasted and lit on fire because they made the toys and no one actually bought them. So they had all the costs of getting the molds, getting the plastic, shipping it across the ocean, moving it into stores, and then having no one grab it. That is also about 290 million pounds of plastic every single year. So they lose two and a half billion dollars and dump a quarter of a billion pounds of plastic back into the world most of which is not recycled. And even if it was, that took more energy to recycle it, so we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole. This is a fantastic amount of waste, financially and environmentally, and it happens every single year. So why is that? Well, there's a few reasons. First of all, you cannot have empty shelves in retail. The opportunity cost, the cost of not having something to overproducing a little bit, is way too high because it is better to have just 10% more than to be 40% short of what people want. If a Star Wars movie really breaks loose and you don't have enough toys to sell people while they're thinking about it, then you missed a huge amount of money flowing by. So that's an economic reason. The other part is supply chain. Molding is a very slow process. You have to get the mold almost always overseas, especially for toys. The mold has to make 100,000 parts in order to pay itself off. Those parts then have to be put in a shipping container. That shipping container has to be put on a boat, slowly floated across the ocean, and then distributed to the stores or to the fulfillment centers where these things are being sold. That supply chain is slow and cumbersome. And since it's so unreactive, because it takes weeks if not months to get something from that side of the ocean to this side of the ocean, you have to overproduce to make sure that you don't run out. Because if you run out of stock in November, there is no way you will get fresh stock in time for the Christmas season in December. So they end up overproducing 10 to 30%. Now, here's the thing. That is the way it has to be done. There's no other way to get it done unless there's a process that can actually make parts on demand at scale. That's how you get rid of overproduction. You make stuff as people ask for it. But there is a process that does that. Mass production 3D printing is able to be far more flexible, down to almost an individual part level, in producing parts on demand at scale for people. So when an order comes in from a website, a machine can grow that part, and then it's thrown in a box and shipped to the customer within days. Almost as fast as Christmas shipping lots of times. Remember how I said that all of that money could be turned into fidget spinners? About 3.5 billion fidget spinners. Well, let's run with that a little bit because a fidget spinner is a nice happy medium between a Lego brick and a Barbie, so we'll use that as an average. So a fidget spinner like this one can be produced with 3D printing in less than four hours. If you turned all the toys into fidget spinners, that's 3.5 billion fidget spinners, multiplied by four hours. So you've got 13.8 billion hours to make all the toys that everybody wants every year. So you need enough printers to distribute that production time over in order to produce all the toys that you need. If you do that, that's 1.6 million 3D printers, which is a ton of 3D printers. As a matter of fact, it's pretty close to the total number of printers in the world right now. And that sounds like an unachievable number, but it's really not. It's really only about 500 of our current mass production mega farms. Each one of them is spec'd out for 3,000 machines. So 1.5 million 3D printers needed, okay, 3,000 machines per facility, 500 factories. That's really not that big. There's 700,000 production businesses inside the US alone, not counting the rest of the world. Adding 500 more or refurbishing 500 of them to be using 3D printing rather than injection molding is not an obscene request. But how much is it gonna cost? 3D printers are really expensive. 
Well, not really. The total cost to build uh, one and a half million 3D printers is really only 800 million. 800 million! Remember, the industry is burning $2.5 billion every year because they overproduce. You could spend 800 million and save yourself one and a half billion. But that's not even true because the printers aren't gonna catch fire after one year of use. So you actually get to spread that cost over multiple years. Over three years, you're looking at 260 million per year to pay for the printers. Again, one fifth the total waste that is just baked in because they are forced to overproduce to make sure that they never run out. One fifth the cost to use 3D printing rather than to use injection molding. And not to mention all the other savings. You could put these 500 factories next to Amazon fulfillment centers, so now you eliminate the shipping cost too, which is not small, but we'll save that for a different video. So there is this way for the toy industry to save multiple billion dollars per year by simply eliminating overproduction and using 3D printing instead. But simply is an oversimplification. 3D printing has a number of challenges. There's only certain parts that it can produce, but those certain parts right now constitute more than half of what is sold. Puzzles, games, building blocks, those can be made with 3D printed parts very easily and very safely and at mass production scales. And then long term though, the industry would need to learn how to change the design of products for injection molding and learn how to use 3D printing. An action figure in injection molding has to be made differently for 3D printing. They can be the same ultimate quality, but you have to use different ideas and design methodologies in order to use 3D printing well. So there are some of those challenges. And again, we will break down each one of those in follow up videos to this one but it is possible. And the basic math is there to show that there are a substantial savings by eliminating overproduction. 3D printing is a solution that can eliminate overproduction. This saves billions of dollars and it saves millions of pounds of plastic being thrown into the environment or needing to be recycled, which uses more energy. It's just a no brainer to work at making this work. And it's silly not to be pushing on this harder when there's so much money that could be saved and waste already occurring. Comment down below with any other thoughts that you might have and let us know any other topics that you might like us to cover. Have a great day, everybody.